Thank you, Kelly. Well, welcome to the meeting, everyone. Um, iguanas and all. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, we will begin the meeting, um, call to order. Um, and so I saw that we had one um, proposed amendment to the minutes already. Um, do you want to, it was from you, Dick, right? I, I didn't actually get a chance to look at it yet. Do you want to um, quick go over your proposed? Oh, Lisa. Well, Dick can go first. Okay. I got to find it. So uh, Kelly, do you okay. have what I wrote? Maybe you I can forward it. it to you. I ha I'm just looking at it. Well, can you just read it? Because I can't find it. Oh, sure. It, so. Yeah, actually, I could do that. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, Dick, uh, request these changes in the minutes. Um, from after coordinating a food composter tour at Madison College with staff from the college and participating sustainability committee members, um, Brahmesh says, um, and then no changes after that. Um, and then, so that was the from part. And then the two part, um, Ramesh organized an informative tour of the food waste composter at Madison College on late afternoon, January 9th, which was also attended by sustainability committee members Lathrop, uh, Pulvermacher, and Wetzel. Ramesh says, and then continued. Um, so, you know what I'll do is I'll post this right in the comments section. Well, basically, I just wanted to put in that there were three of us that went, and I just thought, well, hey, it's a lot of it's a big deal to have to drive all the way over there for a couple hours and tour it, and it was quite informative. And so I just wanted to uh, state that we did go. There were three of us, and um, so I'm only asking for that change in the minutes, and that was it. Okay, Lisa. Okay, I have just minor corrections on page one of the minutes, page two of the packet. Under public comments, it says, talk to others about supporting candidates. It should say that prioritize sustainability and climate issues. And then on the next page in the Monarch Pledge, I think the commission, and I didn't check to find out if it's an actual commission, but it's park. PRFC, Park Recreation and Forestry. And I'll look while we're on to see if it's a commission or a committee. And then the final one is the next paragraph after that. Committee members also stated that residents often call to complain about the native plant landscape in front of City Hall <clears throat> instead of from. And that's all I had. Any other proposed amendments? I don't see any. Um, do we have a motion to uh, accept the minutes as amended? Uh -huh. So moved. Okay, do we have a second? Second. Okay, we had several. So we'll do Kermit. And then uh, all in favor of the amended minutes? Aye. 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 Okay, all right, any nays? I don't think so, okay. Uh, minutes are approved as amended. Thank you. Okay, do we have public comments this evening? Kevin. Oops, I'm coming up here. Hang on a second. No problem. no problem. All right, thank you. I can't see myself, but um, I noticed on tomorrow's finance committee agenda. And I assume, I think uh, the, the common council as well. There is uh, an agenda item related to an extra almost one and a half million dollars of ARPA money that's available to the city. And it looks like um, it's getting allocated to a lot of good uh, sustainability and climate related projects. And I'm hoping that either Kelly or Lisa could address that because I don't think it's on the agenda otherwise. And it seems to be a, a great development. So that's all I have to say. Thanks for the opportunity. Okay, thank you. Do we have any other public comments? This evening? It uh, doesn't look like it. Not that I can see. Speak now if you have any. Um, Lisa, do you have a public comment? I do. I have a public comment. And the okay. comment is this. First, 
um, Council and uh, the Finance Committee and the Personnel and Finance Committee are meeting on Wednesday this week instead of Tuesday because of the election tomorrow. Um, it's the Supreme Court uh, race, the spring primary, and City Hall Council Chambers are, we use those for a polling place. So if anybody is planning to tune into the meeting or attend, uh, don't show up tomorrow unless you're going to vote and you live in that those districts. Um, it, it's Wednesday night. <clears throat> And second, one of the items on the agenda is carrying over ARPA funds that the city has already been awarded and, and we didn't spend all of the money that we thought we would spend in the first uh, year and a half of that um, funding availability. So, um, so we don't have any new funding coming in from ARPA. We have carryover that Council and the Finance Committee will consider. and. Um, and I believe some of a little bit of the money will be freed up to go to other projects. So I think we're increasing our unallocated amount by something like $5,000 to more like $56,000. So it isn't new funding, it's um, carryover. Just to let everybody know. That's helpful, thank you. Okay, thank Kevin, you. you. Kevin, you might wanna lower your hand. Kelly, do you have a public comment? Um, I just, uh, I have a follow-up question for Lisa, but um, it's not, it's related to her public comment, but I don't know rules and order if I can ask this now, because it's not an, it is actually yeah. somewhat of an agenda item, or I can just ask her offline. It's just about the agenda item she mentioned. Probably easier <laughs> Okay. To ask right. offline. Okay, no problem. Okay. All right, thanks everyone. So that concludes the public comments and we can move on to um kelly i think it's staff report next yep thank you um so what questions uh do we have for kelly um about her staff report this month well, actually it's only been two weeks ish right maybe everyone you know it all looks good. <laughs> Hi, Lisa, or right, Lisa, Hello. go ahead. Okay, I have a couple questions on page one of the staff report. Um, you, you use the acronym IPM, and I wasn't sure if that was, I didn't, wasn't sure what that was. Um, so that's my first question. Second question is, um, about the deadline, you mentioned in item four on the battery storage project, um, most likely needing to extend our grant deadline again um, to the end of December of 2023. And I was just gonna ask, what, what is the deadline right now? Because I would suggest not bringing it up until we're closer to it, um, but maybe we are pretty close to um, the end of our deadline. And then the last, comment I had was just thanks for sharing that news about the Sousa Palooza and uh, West Tank. That'll be good. Yeah, so the first thing, I'm sorry I didn't write out what IPM is. Um, I usually remember to do that because no one knows what that is. It's integrated pest management. And um, there's a national organization that's headquartered in Madison, but it's actually a national organization and it's called the IPM Institute, but that stands for the Integrated Pest Management um, Institute. And they work on reducing pesticide use through um, least toxic methods of pest control, whether that's outdoor with um, in yards and parks or indoors in schools or buildings or on farmland. So they have multiple programs addressing different, um, you know, indoor, outdoor um, integrated pest management, and they're highly skilled at that, at, at what they do. So um, I wanted to involve them in the energy efficiency navigator program, the public health side with um, assessing um, how to reduce pesticide use in buildings um, along with the energy efficiency work. And that would, be funded through our um, Healthy Babies grant. And then the battery storage project, um, the deadline that how it's written now by the PSC is through June, 2023. But when we received that, that new deadline, 
um, the PSC did say we may need to further extend this out into December, but let's talk again as we near June. But we need to speak with them soon because all of these things take months to process and there's contract language that goes back and forth between legal teams and then there's the construction bit itself um, and then a delay by MGE. We, we haven't been able to get them to review our interconnection request, which is also a frustration. So um, there's a lot of moving parts to that project and I'm really uh, anxious to get it done. I have a meeting with HGA Engineering on, it's this week, I can't, I think it might be Friday to discuss um, the construction bid process and get putting that out to bid and then getting the questions answered we need from MGE. And then I'll also discuss with them at that time the extension to that grant. Um, and that's internal. That's not something that need that would need to be voted on or anything by the committee. It's just staff work with the PSC and our our um, our the engineers. Um, and then the last question. Oh yeah, you didn't have another question. Dick, you're next. Yeah, can you scroll up to number two? Um, this this is not the program that we're trying to piggyback our um, light bulb exchange thing on for low income housing. I I guess right. I mean, you didn't have anything in the staff report about that, and yet we're still waiting on getting. You know, I mean, we've been hearing about, well, it'll be an month or two last fall, even we'll get this uh, decision process moving forward. And and so number two is not about that, right? That's the program, but we don't have the building selected yet. We've opened the application. And so building owners will be applying over the next few weeks and we'll be assessing buildings at that time, going into the buildings and seeing if they're a good fit for the program and then selecting as quickly as we can six buildings um, for the work. So um, it's teed up to uh, for us to have those buildings selected, um, but we're in the application process right now. Okay, I just have a follow-up question, please. Mm -hmm. um, have you identified entities or buildings to at least contact to start with? Because I think that's what Deb and I are trying to get this light bulb thing going. We got all these light bulbs stored and we were going to use, I guess, your contact list of people to us also send out an information, you know, little thing about, hey, we've got free light bulbs, you know, while you're applying and you may not get a grant, obviously they may not get a grant, but they might still be interested in working on our light bulb. So it's kind of the chicken or the egg thing here, but you know, we're waiting for you to contact buildings. So you must have come up with a list that you already contacted and you're waiting for um, applications from those that decide to do it or how is this going? No, um, the way we're doing this is we are, we created the eligibility criteria and then the instead of con reaching out to particular buildings, which I think would be sort of a, wouldn't be very transparent. I feel more comfortable with building owners applying to the program. And then anyone who applies um, would be, I think, open to having the LED light bulb exchange um, as part of you know, their assessment. Um, we're hoping to assess more buildings than we actually go into to work. I mean, that would be ideal. And then um, let's say that 14 building owners apply, then all 14 could be eligible for the LED exchange, but we would only be work doing deep retrofits in six of them. And our method of outreach is, um, is with sustain Dane and Elevate with um, press release, it's on sustain Dane's website. We need to do social media, have the get, the copy that was developed late last week to the alders to send out in their newsletters um, and send out through notify me, like all the channels that we have available to us, um, that, that's how we're gonna advertise this. And then people will apply to the program. 
that's how it has been set up. That's been the plan. I have a pretty aggressive program to at least announce to all these different social media connections that these funds are available and hope that you get a number of building owners to apply for the funds. And then it would be that list that we could uh, use for our uh, light bulb thing. When is the deadline? Have you written it here? Uh, that, that We're, when you we the deadline, um, there's no hardened deadline because we're hoping to start processing the applications as they come in on March 1st, and then it will be rolling after that. So if we get eight applications in the next two or three or four weeks, then that'll be, the funds will probably go to some subset of those applications. If let's say four or five trickle in, by March 7th or something, then we'll keep the, app the applications rolling. And until we get um, six buildings that we've assessed and we know are um, ripe for deep retrofits. Okay. I think just as a FYI, you inserted a paragraph here, but you didn't number it. That's a separate item. That should have been number three in your, your list here. That's part of this program as well. Oh, um, okay. The Energy Efficiency Navigator Program has two parts. There is the energy retrofits with Elevate and Sustain Dane and the city and mom and the senior center. And then in conjunction with that, it's very, very, it's meant to be together very deliberately. And that is the Healthy Babies Bright Futures Grant, which does public health work simultaneously with the energy work. And there's many reasons for that. Um, that I've stated in various um, past, I think, updates, but um, we're hoping to get into those buildings and do lead, mold, pesticide mitigation, and also energy all at the same time with all of the all of the experts. So it's it's complex in that way that you need to engage public health, Madison, Dane County, I mean, and um, other entities like IPM Institute, maybe some indoor air quality experts, in addition to Elevate and Sustain Dane um, and the building owners and mom and the senior center. <laughs> and there's a lot of partners on the project. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. Kermit, I believe you are next. Yeah. Is that right? <laughs> yeah, thanks. Um, uh, and thanks, Dick. You hit a number of questions I had related to the uh, energy efficiency navigator already. Uh, just a clarification, though. Um, so it's uh, when did applications become open for the project and what's, if anything, has uh, come in so far? Am I, anyways, I'm just curious about that. Um, the the applications opened last week and late last week, and they are on the sustained Dane. It's housed on the sustained Dane website. And once the applications come in there, then they will do with along with elevate intake interviews, which have which has a decided set of questions mm -hmm. that they ask the building owners who are applying. And so I don't know if any applications came in on like Thursday or Friday. Yeah, we have a check-in mm -hmm. meeting this Wednesday. So I'll know this Wednesday, but I think we all need, we're, we're, we all, we, we had a meeting last week about outreach and um, who, who was doing what on the outreach. So that's all rolling out as well. And then hopefully we'll get more applications to come in in the next couple of weeks. Okay, and uh, thank you. And that brings up a question or thought regarding um, targeted outreach, like I'm hearing, and we're going to be sending out press releases, and it's like press releases are notoriously ineffective, uh, at least in in my uh, experience and observation, uh, without a direct follow up and or without um, targeted engagement. So, for instance, if you can get uh, like a, a landlord association. I don't know if there's such a thing in Middleton per se. Uh, I know there used to be one in Madison, which might have an umbrella effect as far as networking, uh, that that might 
be worth pursuing or, or checking on, you know, some targeted outreaches. And that's the one specific option that comes to mind. I don't have their contact information, but uh, otherwise, I mean, it's just going to get buried if it gets in any newspaper as a press release item. Do you think uh, we should not do a press release? I mean, that's not our only. I, I think that's I think, one I think it's of like, many things. It's 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 something you can check check off on the list, but it's just saying we're doing this great thing. I, it, it takes some marketing strategy to kind of make it into an interesting news item that'll get picked up. And yeah. if you don't really have some kind of news hook for general interest, then you need to kind of find out who might be interested anyway, like Middleton Chamber of Commerce newsletter. That might be a target that might be worth pursuing with a press release. Uh, and again, like if there's a landlord association in Middleton, I, I'm not aware of it per se, but I know there was one in Madison. That might be, again, a targeted outreach that might have a greater chance of hitting hitting the ducks you're wanting to hit. Yeah, we were planning on doing newsletters in Chamber of Commerce and MOM and um, Senior Center. And there's uh, Sustain Dane has the Google Doc with the outreach plan. And I'd be happy to share that with the committee because there's there's many, many things that are on that list. Um, okay. Yeah, and maybe that would be something just to send as a attachment for us to look at and maybe give some suggestions or feedback. Yeah, any suggestions you have would be great. And also to share um, in your network and I can get you all the the copy and the language and the graphics that they have so far. That would be okay, great. great. Kelly, I wonder too, if the, yeah. in, in Kermit's line of thought, Kermit, we'll go back to you real quick. Okay. Um, but the um, with the Middleton Outreach Ministry has caseworkers um, that, you know, help people avoid eviction and then they help people, you know, negotiate, you know, all this, you know, negotiate utility bills and payments. So they might, these caseworkers might know some of these buildings and then we could find out the owners, you know, that we have a big population of people in need. Just a thought, Kermit, I'm sorry yeah. to interrupt you okay. on that one. Yeah. And, and uh, again, another idea as far as outreach and targeting the tenant resource center, uh, wow. Particularly, I think they often will end up working with, you know, smaller landlords because of the cases they deal with and people who are, uh, anyways, that'd be a research resource to pursue. One, because they work with smaller landlords in my experience and uh, recollection. And two, because the uh, resource center, I think has a landlord engagement or out resource program that they run as well. Don't know if it's still going, but uh, it, that would be something I'd recommend. Uh, and the last question or area I had, uh, whenever I see Lakeview Project, I think of Lakeview Park, and then I go, wait, no, that's not the park. Could you uh, refresh my rusty memory on what, in brief, that is going to? It's like an apartment complex that we're giving money to for anyways yeah enlighten this, me again okay this was um a grant we received from the energy innovation grant program that's what eigp stands for yeah. and um it was four hundred and forty two thousand dollars. our partners on this are wisconsin housing preservation corps and they are subcontracting with um elevate energy but also a sol solar company which i don't know if they have been chosen yet because you can't do work on these EIGP grants until you have the contract signed. And so last month, the, um, the contract with the PAC came in finally after a full year. That's how long it took for the Department of Energy to review our, our very initial plans for battery storage and solar in a six townhome unit build subsidized housing building near Lakeview Park. And um, so we finally got the contract. We got it signed immediately and passed through um, Finance and Council last meeting. 
And now we're waiting on the contract agreement between w Wisconsin Housing Preservation Corps and the city. And that also takes a lot of back and forth editing on contract on agreements. All these things like take weeks, if not months to pass through the process. So hopefully we will send that agreement the next council meeting, um, the first a council meeting in March, and then that project can begin in earnest. And they've done some background work, so hopefully it'll go more quickly. That would also be a project that if you wanted to do the LED light bulbs in that building, um, that would be six units of light bulbs that would be great um, to supply in that project as well. It's a separate project from the Energy Navigator, but it's very similar because it involves electrification, solar, and then also battery. Okay. So basically it's, it's an apartment complex near Lakeview Park, but it's mm -hmm. not Lakeview Park. And it, is it called like Lakeview Apartments or? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Thanks. Mm -hmm. And that's it for me for now. Okay. Thank you, Kermit. Lisa? Thanks. Um, so the energy efficiency project, um, first of all, I think it's really awesome and inspiring to see all the logos of the partners at the bottom of um, the flyer. I, I enjoyed the flyer, thought it was well done. Um, and I think we make a very impressive group and I hope we can make the project equally impressive and get past, past some of the pushback that it's been getting. You know, it's interesting that Kelly noted how similar these two projects are. The six unit uh, Lakeview apartments being done by Wisconsin um, Housing Development Corporation and then the independently owned uh, uh, two and four unit um, buildings. And yet the the former one that I described just sailed right through council with um, praise and um, a lot of uh, admiration expressed for the project and the landlord. And that is not at all what's been happening um, for the energy navigator. Um, I, I don't know the reason for um, con the concern expressed about enriching landlords under this energy navigator program and not having the same concern about um, the bigger, uh, bigger building, but it is what it is. So um, Kelly, I'm sure this will come up again on Wednesday and I hope um, I, I was looking at the picture of the people on the flyer and thinking it would be you know, I love the quote from the uh, building owner. I think that's something to highlight. Um, it would be great to get an interview <laughs> with the building owner so we can put to rest this notion that, um, you know, they're scheming um, people just trying to pocket the money instead of really trying to improve the property that they've invested in. So their tenants will like it more and fare better. Um, I love the idea of doing a bulb exchange with any building that doesn't, that applies for the funding, but doesn't, <laughs> excuse me, doesn't get selected for the project. And then I do hope the leftover bulbs would go to mom. And I think a, a press release is a good idea. I mean, at this mm -hmm. time of year, we've got um, the energy or the food assistance is going to be cut um, from the <laughs> recent levels. It's going to be dropped. If, forget the number, but significantly enough for the people who depend on it. Um, the utility assistance is going to be coming to an end now that, win well, when winter ends. Um, and so I think tying it into, the, you know, a feel-good story about, about helping people um, live more comfortable and affordable lives um, and tying it into the IRA, if that's possible. I, I really think if you get Kathy Koontz and Ellen Carlson to throw in some quotes, it could be a, a really interesting piece mm -hmm. for someone to pick up, maybe even a uh, television news. Yeah, that's what I'm hoping is the television spot. Um, and if I could just say one quick thing, one thing I, I wanted to, I meant to communicate to the committee or I, I don't know how to communicate this, but um, I say it in council meetings and I don't think it's like, um, I don't think I'm saying it right, but um, I think that the fact that Middleton went ahead and approved that ARPA funding for the Energy Efficiency Navigator project early on, that was a that was like kind of shocking to the surrounding communities. And then they tried similar things in other communities, and I know Sun Prairie it didn't pass, but they still are trying to do it. And so I have a lot of people calling me saying like, "How did you get this through?" and um, 
But one thing I would say is that because we committed to that early, that I do think that that was one of the biggest reasons why we got that $442,000 grant for Lakeview Project. It's also pri the primary reason that we got the Healthy Babies Grant of $20,000. And if we get the next EIGP round of grants, which we may or may not, I think it's a toss up, but if we do, then it would also be primarily because of the fact that the committee, I mean, the council committed that funding to ARPA to the Energy Efficiency Navigator Program. So I just, uh, so like my narrative in that is just to say that sometimes by being an early adopter and going out on a limb, taking a bit of a risk and funding something can actually get you more money on the back end to do similar work and sort of propel momentum to scale this work up community-wide. Because everything we've done since that first initial approval at, Count at Common Council is to scale this work and start developing community relationships so that we can do this in a larger scale, neighborhood scale as we move forward. But you can't do the big thing before you start making the relationships. So it's like a, it's something that starts small maybe, but can grow. And so that's also, I feel like a value to that project. And we also got matching funds from Elevate for one project and WHPC. So for one project, we got an additional 80 some thousand. And for the other project, we got something like $67,000 in additional funds of match funds that other organizations are bringing into the community to do this work. So I don't think that's not, that's not nothing, you know, it's, it's substantial. So um, I just want the committee to be aware that this is like part of a larger systemic movement and not just a one-off project. Ellie, can I suggest, I mean, I, that's what you just said is excellent. And I don't think that has come across at council meetings. And I was gonna suggest just doing a single slide, very simple graphic to show this ARPA funding as the foundation and then all these other chunks of funding coming in to demonstrate that if we whittle away that initial request, it'll undermine the work that we've, it, you know, the other funding that's come our way and, and, you know, possibly lessen our chances of getting future funding. And it doesn't have to be fancy, just putting that as the foundation and everything else on top coming in. A great suggestion. Kelly, that is a very helpful summary. Thank you. That's awesome. I think it's partly because our committee is so fabulous, all of us. Wow. And council who approved it. I really do want to give the council kudos because the, the former council too, because they were the one I really, you know, we really had to debate this for probably a full year. Um, yeah. to get, and then we're still debating it now. We'll debate it tomorrow or Wednesday. So, um, <laughs> It's not, it's not been easy, but also I think it's, I feel like there's a way to show its worth beyond just six buildings or eight buildings. Yeah, good point. <clears throat> Official thank you to um, councils, both. Um, Dick. Yeah, um, Kelly, when, when you write these things up, can you, all these acronyms, EIGP, WHPC, can you write out the name of it so that I can we can get more familiar with the project? I know the acronyms are just second nature to you, but for us, it's it's harder to keep track of it. So, I mean, obviously we don't need MG&E to be spelled out or, or MOM, but uh, these big project grants and things. And then the last thing you mentioned that Lakeview is actually ready maybe to be contacting for light bulbs. So, just let Deb and I know, and any others that would like to help us on this, we're not trying to do this all ourselves, but as the committee members, that uh, we could start going ahead with this. So we need direction from you if we're going to make this project, you know, go. So we're just sitting back wondering, well, we've been having these things for over a year now and, and just waiting. And so we're really depending on you to tell us, okay, now we can start doing something with the, with the apartments at Lakeview, or we got to wait until we get the applications in from the the EIGP project or whatever, you know. So just just want let you know that we want to get this going. And yes, Lisa, anything we don't use that we've de designated for 
these kinds of uh, apartment retrofits. If we feel like we're done with the, at the end of this, then we can turn all these bulbs over to mom and, and distribute in that way. That's probably the most efficient, but we don't want to start having the Catholic church take some and then pledge some to mom. And then all of a sudden we don't have the supply that we have because the, the supply has actually ended. There's no longer a program to get these um, cheap bulbs. So um, anyway, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, good discussion. Thanks everyone. Anyone have any other questions, feedback, comments for Kelly? Not right now, thank you. Um, okay, so the next agenda item, I don't, um, I don't have it right in front of me here. I'll wait till Kelly scrolls. I think it's the um, work initiatives, right? Yep. Okay. Um, and so I want to, Kelly and I had, uh, before we start this um, section, which is always a really important section that we never seem to get through. Um, and that's actually part of um, the kind of um, point I want to make about it is that uh, Kelly and I had a very good discussion on Wednesday um, we met um, and talked about it, and um, Kelly brought up that, and I think she's right, um, that we have a lot of things going on, and we would all love to do everything. I would I would love to do, you know, we all would love to do so much more and just get everything done, you know, immediately, but which is not possible. Um, and um, and even I've been guilty about kind of throwing things, yeah, let's add on this, let's add on this, let's add on this. And all of a sudden, there's so many balls in the air that, um, you know, we, it's, it's a potential to get less done. Um, so sometimes, in my experience, less is more. Um, and, um, you know, my, the last company I worked at, we had so many projects for example we just we had too many projects and when you have too many projects um you know it's it's again been my experience that you actually get less done because you can't move any one thing forward or it's harder to move things forward because you're just trying to tackle too much um and so um i think again kelly had a very good point that we want to be careful not to do that um and make ourselves potentially less effective um by spreading ourselves too thin. Um, so, um, uh, and Kelly brought up four things basically that she feels, and I agree with her. Um, and Kelly, if I'm stating something wrong or not right, please just jump in. Um, but um, we talked about, Kelly and I talked about, you know, perhaps the priorities could be sustainable purchasing policy uh lead which will you know happen this year and be a big announcement um the falco tool and biodiesel and then the sustainable building guidelines um could really get rolled out this year 2023 and kelly will initiate this write the draft and then she will actually need all of our help on this to circulate it among the committee have stakeholder engagement meetings i mean that alone is a pretty big thing um and something that definitely needs to happen so i guess when we go through more of these work initiatives i i, I think we should keep this in mind um and I, I might and we could definitely go through the work initiatives and people can comment on what i just said um but if you don't mind i know i would love to get shreya um done first because she actually does truly have to leave even earlier this time um, for another meeting. Um, she's fitting us both in. Um, so if, does that sound okay with everyone? If we just, Katreya's updates are usually very nice and concise and succinct, and then we'll move forward with the, the remainder of the discussion about it. So Shreya, go ahead. Um, hi, everyone. So uh, I'll start with the green team update. So we're still working on the plastics competition. Um, we started distributing bags to advisories. Um, so they've just started collecting those. So green team hasn't really met in the last three weeks because of the snow days. Because we always meet on Thursdays and we've had snow days cons consistently on, on Thursdays. So, um, so that's what the green team's been doing. Um, we talked about the Instagram page last time that we were gonna start um, with the green team and the committee kind of combined. 
Um, so I created that and I was going to introduce it to the meeting on or last Thursday, but we had a snow day. So um, we have another meeting this Wednesday. So I'm planning to introduce it to the kids then and um, they can start um, posting or whatever they want to do, like a sustainable tip like that. Um, and then the composter, I spoke to our tour guide again after this month and he sent me like a lot more information. And I know Ms. Fulmer Mucker and I um, discussed like other um, composter options, um, but I did a lot more research on the one that we saw at MATC. And I think having an expert nearby that's that's like well-versed in the composter that like that they have, um, I think Chester is a really good option, but that would be another discussion for a com committee to have. Um, so I created a Google Drive folder, um, well, personally for me, um, about everything that he sent me, because he sent me more details about the financials and um, everything about the composter. But um, I was going to share that to the committee, but I didn't know how I was supposed to go about that because I didn't know how I was supposed to share that. But um, I will do that after the meeting. Um, and so basically, he sent me a lot of um, uh, a lot of documents about how to, like, the sorry, the, the like pre preparing the site when we buy the composter and specifically they sent me the quote that um, the Madison College used um, that they like presented to the, the school itself. And I think, or I was, I started creating the email template, which I will also put in the Google Drive folder that I'll send out to everybody. Um, and we, or I kind of talked to the presidents and they said a lot of the green team parents might be willing to send emails to the school board, like regarding the composter. So for, for the composter, that's also what I have, but yeah. Thank you. Any questions for Shreya? No, we're good. Thank you, Shreya. Dick, yeah, Dick. Oh, oh Dick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, one of the things we learned on our tour was that plastics that get into it by just food waste, students or any you know, Madison College dumping their tray and their materials has a lot of plastics. So one of the challenges is to not get plastics in that stream. And I think he was talking about there are biodegradable plastic ware that could be purchased. So probably more expensive than cheap stuff. I'm assuming the school height now is using cheap plastic. Correct. Yeah. So is this part of your plastic effort to get rid of the non bio even if the stuff went to a landfill, at least it would be biodegradable mm -hmm. uh, as opposed to the raw unbiodegradable plastics with the idea, well, if we got that kind of uh, tableware in the system and then it could go in the com composter when you switch. So is there some thinking about how to coordinate these two efforts uh, um, so that what does go in it eventually, assuming that you end up being able to do it, uh, you don't have to worry about contamination. Um, so specifically, the the school district itself is working on being more sustainable because, like the school district sustainability committee, they created another plan which Daphne was a part of. Um, so in that, it kind of states that we're kind of um, or we're changing into more biodegradable things, and um, the green team is also working on that as one of their plastic efforts. So um, as we're presenting this compost to the school board, eventually at some point, I think we will have to mention that um, that the plastics will be a problem and like, I'm like, we can, we can figure out a way to increase funding for the biodegradable stuff. But I'm sure I know the school district, especially, especially the cafeteria staff, they're like slowly starting to switch to those because even our like, they kind of gotten the, gotten rid of the concept of the plastic trays, we've like switched to like paper plates as such. And um, it's kind of, they're kind of like trying to um, move away from plastic. So as we're kind of, I think it'll, it'll eventually go to biodegradables, but I will also think about that, yeah. Kelly? Oh, I just wanted to say, um, thanks Shreya. Um, if you, anytime you wanna share something with the committee, um, all of you can feel free to send the whole committee an email it's just that when it gets into the back and forth, that's the thing that goes against the open um, or the, the quorum rules. But also if you don't feel comfortable or don't have everyone's emails, obviously that's a thing, then you can also email me and I can send it out. 
or and I can also put things um, in this packet. So if you, you know, want next month to put some kind of sheet or something that someone gave you in, then I can I can add that for you. Sure, that would be great. Yeah, I'll okay. I'll send I'll send you the the folder. Yeah. yeah. Thank no you. Problem. Yeah. Good idea. Kermit. Yeah, thanks. Um, Shreya, it's, it sounds like you have a lot of energy and excitement about the composting project. Um, in, in everything you were saying, I was losing track of what the next step looks like it's going to be as far as what you're doing. But like you said, you have a Google Drive and you're collecting research information and you're wanting to tell people, but I mean, I, I just want to get a little, see if I track with you a little bit more closely as far as what's what are the next steps that you're seeing for what it sounds like is ultimately a vision of having a industrial mm -hmm. composter at Middleton High School. Uh, correct. Okay. So in terms of like steps, so our green team meets like every week. Um, next week we, um, or I'm, or, I, I'm making the email or I made the email template, which I'll put in the Google Drive. And so we're for next week's meeting. Um, a lot of the green team parents um, thought that they could send emails to the school board regarding the composter. Um, so I was going to send them the email template with all the information about the composter. And then the um, or, and specifically, I think, or I, I have to email one of the school board members because, um, or I have contacted one of them. And I, I was going to, um understand like the procedure when presenting something to the school board because I'm not very familiar with that so um as of now I think we're just like preparing like a proposal for them itself and I will um I have to uh get your all of your input as well regarding what we're going to do specifically with the composter but as of now I think we need to like show our like the the family support of especially the green team members um regarding the composter so that's what I'm working on okay so you're you're it sounds like you're trying to gear up a uh uh public input phase of yeah. uh, emails and others to the board, maybe even a presentation to in public comment section of the board that there's community support for moving in this direction. Yeah. Okay. Yep, thanks. And more steps will need to follow. Yeah. I know some other community members who would also send letters of support for that too. Oh, that'd be great. Yeah, I'll put the email template in the folder um, and I'll ask Ms. Hoyer to send that out. So that would be great. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Um, so moving on, um, I'm not quite sure how to facilitate, um, you know, the discussion um, that I mentioned, but does anyone have any thoughts or feelings or Lisa go ahead you know just about how we sort of get control of time and and make a plan um, yep. so that we don't we stay on track no I think it's a great suggestion and you know one of the things I have been hoping we would do um, since the sustainable city plan was approved is come up with our one-year work plan um, page four of the of the the approved sustainable city plan has this I'll drop in the quote has this um, um, paragraph in it um, explaining kind of what you're getting at Christy that you know we can just keep adding on and coming up with new ideas for projects but if in 2022 we felt that you know achieving the 100% renewable energy goal should be the priority and then we pulled out the projects from the um, comp plan and others um, that we thought should you know fit within that um, main goal um, then the next step is and that's a three-year plan so then the next step would be look at those actions and come up with the however many we think we can handle i think you listed four that's reasonable maybe five um, the lead work is not in the sustainable city plan, but that's only because that was so far advanced, but, you know, the data or, or like doing all the things that we're going to need to do in order to actually achieve the lead certification. Like if they come back to us and say, well, you're close, but you know, you have to improve here, here, and here, then, you know, it makes sense to add that. And maybe that's part of our first update. Um, but I still am hoping that we come up with a, a, uh, and 
I have no problem calling it a work plan. Um, that's just how I always did my work in you know every um, organization I worked for. And it seems then people can say, this is what I have the time to do and the interest in doing. So I'm gonna work on that project and we'll, you know be part of that work group. Um, and other people might have other interests and be willing to take the time to work on something that's you know in the plan, but not you know, not the same thing. Um, and I think there's enough variety in the plan, even though it's all about achieving that 100% renewable energy goal. There's there's even some you know nat native land um, native landscaping things are in there too. So um, so there's a wide variety that I think would appeal to everybody on the committee to to find something to work on outside of our meetings. Um, I don't want to see our public outreach drop off. I, I think I mentioned last time. At Kathy Kuntz, when she gave her presentation to the committee of the whole meeting, um, she <laughs> she talked about how she tells everyone <laughs> how great we are. I mean, we you even have a booth at your Good Neighbor Festival, and I was like, okay, made a note. We need a booth at the Good Neighbor Festival, and she's <laughs> right, especially this year. This year with the uh, uh, Inflation Reduction Act, we have a great opportunity to get information to people, uh, both at the um, parade and hopefully with the booth. So, so I, you know, I know you and uh, Christy, you and, <clears throat> and I and Laura volunteered to help with the sustainable purchasing policy. And I, that's in the plan. And that is one that we'll get done this year. Um, but I would hope uh, we'd also be able to hold on to something like a good neighbor fest booth or starting up sustainable you because that's another really good opportunity um to share information about the inflation reduction act which again goes back to our main goal of trying to nudge middleton towards achieving that 100 percent renewable energy goal so that's what i wanted to say okay well first of all i want to give tons of credit to kelly here she's the one who actually i i took notes on what she was saying so that i could make sure i understood it and i think kelly was right on track and lisa you have to give lisa credit here lisa has been harping on this and you know pushing this idea so this is very much credit where credit is due i'm more the messenger here and i agree with the message um um I, you know having said that i even like, I think all these things, you know, I think we need to be careful not making people feel overcommitted, you know, that they like, it's not just so everyone knows, it's not a requirement of taking on a lot of extra projects being on the committee. So if, you know, you're not, you don't have the bandwidth or, you know, that's just not something you want to do, that is okay. Um, I just want to state that. Um, Laura? Yeah. Okay, so um, I agree with that. I think you do need to um, focus on everything. Uh, one thing I might suggest, something that I've always kind of done, I mean, in terms of prioritizing things, it's like, what are, you know, A level stuff that we have to get done, B level if we have time, you know, C level, you, you never get to those, but you can at least, it, it it's a way of saying, okay, here's the laundry list of everything we would love to do, but yeah. this is what has to be done. And then this is what we could kind of fill in as needed. I think that it would be constructive to kind of do that either as a group or to send out a, you know, even just something like, here's all the stuff we've wanted to, to do. Everybody rate your own and then we'll tally it up and discuss it at the next meeting. Um, what's A, B, or C? For example, I, I agree. You were mentioned the SPP that has to happen, the LEED that has to, the FALCO, the Sustainable Building Guidelines, which I think I already told Kelly I'd be willing to work on that. So that puts me kind of on at least the SPP and the building guidelines. But the LEED thing, I know that you have to do energy tracking and, and turn that in, which is one of the things I was kind of working on. Um, I'll, I'll talk about that a little bit um, later. So I just think going through and saying what's a priority and what's connected. So, you know, the energy tracking thing might actually be connected to lead if, if it's required and, and, and stuff like that. So that might be a way to organize our laundry list of wishes. That's a good thought for sure. Um, 
you know, as I look even on the initiatives that we have up here now, and then some of the things that Kelly and I talked about, um, you know, some of these things, I just think we should be careful and prioritizing. Oh, lead is pretty much finished. Kelly, do you want to say that? It's, oh, mg &E. Okay. But it's just the communication and the public outreach and the, you know, promoting it, right, to get the with that. Yeah, there's like a, I guess the communication piece on the back end that would be important that the committee could help with. Um, but yeah, like there's things that staff does that's the, like the committee's not going to put solar on into sites. Like you may support that or pat, you know, recommend that for approval and budget season, but it's not like project management stuff you're doing. So like I have a list of stuff I'm working on and staff, which I'd put lead sort of with that. And then there's the committee stuff, which I don't take a lead on or make decisions on which avenues to pursue, which are things like, you know, the awards that you're doing and the purchasing policy, which you're really taking a lead on. And even the plan, which the committee really drafted and pushed that, you know, organized all of that. So there's major things the committee works on as well. And at least in Middleton. Okay. Deb? I think it's a good idea to have priorities, um, which are, you know, A, B, C um, priorities for, for initiatives. But I, I also think you need a champion for these initiatives. And if you don't have a champion, they're not going to get done. They can be on the list, but they're not going to get done. So um, I think the first thing you need to do is find out who's willing to work on it, who's willing to take the lead, and, and then it'll get done. Um, and if there's nobody willing, maybe it comes off the list. That's true. Example, uh, sustainable U is really a good plan. I haven't seen anybody rise to the occasion to actually do something um, and get some speakers, et cetera. So, I mean, it's on the list every, every month, um, yeah. but we're not doing it, so. Yeah, and I think both of you, uh, you and Lisa, and maybe somebody else last month said, let's make sure to get to these other things. Um, you know, I, I think, again, echoing Kelly's thoughts, which I agree with. And again, Kelly, please just jump in and correct me if I, you know, misstate anything. But, you know, with sustainable you and all these other things, and I think, Deb, I, your point is, is, I think, well taken. A lead, a champion is really important. Um, you know, but like some of these events, if we add on like this event and that event and, you know, oh, it's not much, it's not much. We we want, I think we just want to be care having, I'll, I'll stop talking about it um, and let everyone else talk. But I think we want to be careful about, oh, this one isn't much, this one isn't much, this one isn't much. And then all of a sudden it's a lot, um, a lot. So um, go ahead, Laura. Okay, um, so I was just thinking about, you know, impact because I'm looking at the list here and all of these events and ideas, you know, are great. Like how many, if, if reach is what's, what are our goals? If outreach and impact is what's most important to us, are we going to hit more people at the Good Neighbor Festival with a booth and hand out information and educate more people that way? Or do you think more people are going to come to Sustainable U? I like the Sustainable U idea, but how many people in this day and age are we getting to sit through an hour program on the library website? Is there a better way to do that? You know, where's, where's our, our impact? Uh, I wasn't on the committee last year, but in your summary, the solar bration seemed like you had a lot of contact with people. So it's kind of like, what's our biggest bang for your buck or whatever, you know, what's our biggest impact for the effort we're putting in and, you know, I don't know how well SaltWise went. All of these are great projects. I, I would say the ones that have the potential to reach the most people might be the ones that should rise up the list. I want to say too, Solarbration is an example, and I've done lots of you know, events like this in my previous jobs and things. And, you know, the pictures all look great and the, it's really good, but there is a lot of work behind the scenes on those things. Um, definitely. Kermit? Yeah, I think I'm challenged by the fact that, I mean, the, the principal 
of concern that we don't want to get spread too thin, don't want to be doing too much stuff, I think is an ongoing reality and realization. I mean, I think we've, you know, over the past months and years, we've recognized that that issue and the need to moderate and balance and prioritize. Uh, the one strate somewhat strategic thought, or maybe two strategic thoughts come to mind is one, uh, Lisa in particular has been very uh, key in helping us pull things together into a plan which uh, builds on other plans. You know, basically kind of, it's not like a fresh list made out of whole cloth. It's like this plan, this work plan flows from the, the comprehensive plan and in addition it references and draws from the sustainability master plan. And I think uh, ideally we should, rather than coming up with just this fresh random list of things go, okay, well, wait now, what were we, what did we say we were working on? What have we very intentionally and deliberately committed to working on or addressing as overarching strategic needs? And which thing do, have we finished? Which thing haven't we? What do we need to revisit and redo or come up with a new tactic or new strategy? Um, and I think that's going to take some serious effort that I'd uh, I get tired just thinking about what that would involve, but at the same time, what we are recognizing here is the need to deliberately triage and prioritize and do so in a, a thoughtful and strategic way. But I think that requires not just us saying, okay, here's this great list of stuff, look at what we have on our committee work initiatives, but how do those things fit in to the plan that we committed to, the work plan that we had, and what needs to change. Uh, the, the other strategic concern I have is how do we metricize or measure or triage these different ideas? And in part, you know, if especially if we're focusing on uh, renewable energy adoption, uh, carbon emission reduction, then maybe we need to identify or, or some metrics attached to that and say, okay, which of these ideas is going to have the greatest impact in increasing renewable energy adoption and reducing carbon emission? And uh, that's never, that's, not easy to measure, but I think we need to try to figure out some, some semi-quantitative way to, to look at that so that we go for the, as Laura was saying, the bigger ba biggest bang for the buck. Okay, I like that train of thought too. So what I'm hearing from you, and then we'll go to Dick is, um, um, quantitate, you know, to try to quantify or think about, you know, how to measure, get the, you know, the best outcome right. for our time and work, um, which I like, right. um, you know, and then, but then coupled with, um, you know, thinking of, yeah. you know, Laura's priority ABC has some value, you know, too. Uh -huh. And then, but I think, um, you know, Deb's champion idea is spot on too. Um, so, <laughs> And, and and I guess my the key point that applies or connects with the, let's prioritize and let's have a champion is let's build on our planning that we have already engaged in and let's be intentional about that. Because Which is ju just Lisa because we have a champion well. <laughs> doesn't mean we want to do that because the champion is going to drag other people and other time and energy into doing something that we may not really place a high enough value on 
the triaging. Yeah, that's yeah. But we but we but at the same time, like Deb says, if we don't have somebody who's going to run with that ball or that be the champion for that initiative, it's not gonna happen. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I like what you wrote, Lisa. Yeah, and I think Lisa is actually spot on. You know, we said we would follow these things and and do this, you know, and so right. let's not go off on different tangents, you know, uh, you know, let's follow the plan. We made all these plans. Um, Dick. As I get older, I can't multitask like I used to if I ever did. <laughs> and I'd, I'd work better when I have something that I care about and I really focus on it like a laser. Like, for example, Deb and I and, um, and Rick have been really working hard on this Sustainable Middleton Award. Um, I found Solar Bration, oh, Lisa put a ton of work in that. And quite frankly, they were more exhibitors there than I felt people that were actually benefiting from. We had very few that came up to our little um, booth there on the light bulbs. And the salt wise, hey, I'm a water scientist. I get the reason for it, but I feel that that's, that's not our main purpose of stuff that we're doing. No mow May. My grass got so long in May that I'm, I'm mowing it because I'm not going to let it... Uh, <laughs> get out of hand and uh you know and um i really feel that the high school getting them moving on all their resolution items is a huge hugely important thing and i i, I could see myself wanting to really focus more on that if uh if the green team and the uh, school board are amenable to actually making changes and helping them move forward because that's where we're i think getting most of the community engaged. Sustainable U, there was some good things, but, you know, there are some others I felt, you know, I didn't participate. I didn't help organize it, but it can take a lot of energy to do that. So I'm, I'm with Laura on let's, let's uh, really rank these things and they got to be an A item and they got to be in the priority areas. Like we're all saying that energy reduction and renewable energy, this is important. And I guess that's why this, to me, the Sustainable Middle, Middleton Award, I really wanted to prioritize and push those people that, and entities and businesses that have done something so we can showcase them. So um, I, I, I don't want to see us uh, get going on too many things because yes, Earth Day, for example, Earth Day, at least it's an iconic date that people have gotten tuned into for 50 some years. Uh, where solar bration, we're creating our own event. And I feel like, well, it's too late to really get something going big for Earth Day. But if we but pick Earth Day and the Good Neighbor Festival as two events in the city where we try to target and really do something and get some splash for it, that then, then, then maybe people can have the energy to work on these things. But if we get too many things, in my case, I'll fibrillate and then... Um, you know, we're not making any difference. Or I'm not making any difference. <laughs> I, I think, yeah. I mean, <clears throat> you're right. In the same, and then um, Lisa, you you go ahead next. But um, the even something like the Monarch Pledge, I would love to do, but to do it right as opposed to just lip service, might be more than we can handle right now. Um, I I don't know. You know, I I was. I might get a little pollinator sign for my yard because I have all my new pollinators. I call them my plant babies um, and I take very good care of them. But, you know, then we could do, I, so I was looking on this, this site, this um, Xerces Society or something. And I didn't know you could do a bee pledge city too. I mean, it's kind of endless what you can do. And I would love, yes, I, we would all love to do all of it, but we cannot. Um, so Lisa. Yeah, can I just wait, just jump oh, yeah, in yeah. real quick? Go yeah. Ahead. That, like the utility bill flyer, I'm just reading that. Yeah. That that is a huge opportunity to get stuff out to every household, yeah. and we have to put some thought and energy into taking advantage of that. And if we have these programs, like all these new federal grant things and all these other stuff, as opportunities to let people know about stuff, you know, I, I think that we have to prioritize the avenues to get the information mm -hmm. out, and and we know. That's one, at least they, they get a utility bill flyer uh, once a year uh, and that's, an, or maybe it's quarterly. 
and we should take advantage of it. But um, so anyway, bye. No, I like that idea. And Kelly, real quick, Lisa, but um, Kelly and I talked about, you know, my um, utility bill, water bill came single sided paper. So, you know, printed on single sheets. And so, gosh, would we even have to spend the money as a committee to add another sheet of paper in the printer? Or could we just get printing on the backside? I don't know. We need to check on that. But Lisa. Oh, Le Kelly, you want to answer that question? Yeah, go ahead, Kelly. <laughs> you want me to answer? Yeah. I did find the price for the utility bill flyer for one-sided versus two-sided. You know, it's done by a company, I believe, out of Canada. So it's not something that we can whip up in in-house and then print off, you know, it's, it's, they do it all. We have to provide the PDF ready to go so that when they put it into their printer, it comes out the way we want it. And then they stuff it and there's a cost for all of that. So it was $600 the last time we did this two-sided color. The price has gone up to um, almost $1,400 for one side and 2,300 for two-sided. Um, so the cost has gone up substantially. So that's the information I found out. The other limiting factor with that is that you have we have to have the copy into them finished completely by March 15th. Okay. So we may have dropped the ball on that, but I want to make sure that we record this information so that each year the committee knows the timelines for this thing and, you know, can commit early to doing stuff like this if you want. Is there any that that is a perfect segue to what I was going to bring up. One of the points I was going to make is that another benefit of having a work plan is you can put a timeline in there so that we're never surprised by things like all of a sudden it's on the agenda that, you know, oh, it's, you know, no more May is getting close um, or it's time to clean up the recycling center, which I kind of hope we never do. I, I frankly, I think that is a public works activity. <laughs> so, right. so at the very least, they should be invited <laughs> to help out. Um, same thing with any, you know, hazardous waste collection. It's, it's been something sustainability has done, but it's really a public works function. And, um, and we never think about delegating or asking them to take the lead and, you know, we'll help out if we can. Um, but a work plan would include a timeline so we could sequence these things and know, like in January, we need to start working on what's going to go in the utility bill flyer. Um, regarding NOMO May, my thinking is we don't, there's no event for us to um, publicize. There's just the resolution that needs to go to council. Same thing for salt wise. I know this year there was an attempt to try to get volunteers to help out. I, I think we can spread the word, but it might be, in my mind, there's a package of resolutions that need to be brought before council every single year at different times. You know, no more May would be one. Um, salt wise would be another Earth Day proclamation. We don't have to have an event, but we should, you know, proclaim something um, and call attention to what we're working on. And uh, help me out, Kelly. What's another one that we could do? Leaf free, leaf, leaf free street, something like that. You know, there there's stuff that we can do that'll make a splash that really is just pulling something out of a folder once a year adjusting the dates, updating it here or there, and then having whoever the council member is on sustainability, you know, ask for, to have it introduced. Um, so let's not, let's not always think that we have to have a big activity um, for things. And then the final thing I'm going to mention, <laughs> this is actually more work, but I finally subscribed to Fitchburg's very good um, newsletter for environmental stuff. Middleton's going to have a, or a communication specialist sometime in the this year, I hope. Um, and so we might want to think ahead to things that we can ask that person to help us um, publicize. Good thought. Um, really quick, when Kelly and I talked, uh, in your line of thought, what can we, are there things we can delegate? Um, we talked about on Wednesday, maybe the community gardens um, that you mentioned, Lisa, potentially, you know, another department could administer that, um, not this committee. So that's just a thought um, that I wanted to say before we get away from it. Um, Carmen, you have any comment on that or thought? Yeah, on that? Um, 
Actually, I, th I think Lisa, you did a great job of uh, highlighting the importance of delegating, partnering, and collaborating. I think others have touched on it. I just will underscore that. I like, for instance, with the Mo Monarch project. It's like I thought we delegated that to the the Parks and Land Commission, and so it's kind of like. It's not our priority. If they want to run with it, they can. It makes sense for them. And it's no, I don't think it should be on our list in particular as a priority, especially given our focus on you know climate change and renewable energy. Uh, so, anyways, delegating, partnering, and also collaborating, like for Earth Day, we don't need to do an event. There are lots of events that happen. We can you know, co-sponsor, we, I mean, we can just, you know, put it on our uh, Facebook page, city Facebook page and say we're going to be a co-sponsor for, or participate as a co-sponsor in an event that's already happening. I mean, there's stuff out there. We don't need to reinvent the wheel and actually it can make more of an impact to focus attention on a limited number of events, in my opinion, than to keep on having these multiplications of other thing, other meetings and things to go to that I think people don't have the time and energy for anyways. So collaborate, delegate, partner. Thank you, Deb. I have a question for Lisa. Um, you've mentioned Nomo May and then having to go to the uh, Common Council and if that can could that be a yearly event so we we miss that step can't they can't we get that put into every may we're going to have no mo may instead of going back each year and asking if we can it do can't, that yes it can it's just that we've only done it once and so we would need and you know last year's resolution was just for 2022 so we need to come back this year and I'm willing to take in a, a resolution that says we're going to establish this, um, per, you know, on a permanent basis or for 10 years or, you know, extend it out. Um, but I'll have to get the resolution and change it. It would also require an ordinance change, um, which has to go through license and ordinance committee. Okay. But it seems to me that would make sense. That would be yep. one less step and, and then people can either do it or not. I mean, I was thinking Dick said he didn't want to do it. <laughs> so, I mean, that it's perfectly fine, whatever people want to do, right? Yep. And it just gets advertised. So it'd be a very small uh, task. Yep. Yes, okay. Okay. Um, so do we know, do people have strong feelings right now about, you know, what, what absolutely needs to go on the work plan, the timeline? I mean, can we, is this, could this be quick that we go through this now or is this something we have to run around a document? Uh, Lisa, what do you think? Um, I think if we can nail it down quickly, that would be really good because then we could get it finalized in March. You know, the applications, the application process is open for the city's committees, commissions and boards. Um, the new mayor will be making the appointments, but the application process has already started. And I know, I think there are five of you who are up for reappointment. Um, Shreya is the one-year position. It, students are one-year positions, but everybody else is two. Um, so I don't know if everybody's hoping to continue, um, but it, if anyone is not, it, it would be nice to have this work plan available, at least by the time the new mayor is looking over the applications to see who, who will be appointed. I know uh, Mayor Barr has always interviewed people and it might be nice to have on hand um, a set of four or five things that the committee's working on this year, just to let the applicants know. I like that idea. Well, I mean, some of the things we absolutely know right now are sustainable purchasing plan, you know, lead is, you know, like you said, Kelly, close to being done, but still some comms, um, you know, communication. Um, we have, you know, the Falco to, um, Dominic's not here. I feel confident in saying, uh, based on discussions with him, that he will definitely just want to focus on the Falco tool and the biodiesel, the fleet. Um, 
And then the sustainable building guidelines, definitely, I think. Um, what am I missing? Maybe the events that you want to commit to, because some of them, well, all of them, you would have to start organizing now, probably, even the Good Neighbor Festival. And so I, I, I'm just going to say, I'll, I'll, anyone else can speak up. Um, I personally don't feel like, you know, with, with the things I'm going to be doing with the rest of this, I can't take on the Good Neighbor Festival. You know, just someone, but like you just said, Lisa, I think Lisa said it, you know, um, you know, it's, we're noted for doing that, but it is a whole thing. We have to have the booth staffed, all these things. So, you know, do we have, does that provide impact and do we have a champion for it? Well, can I just jump in? Uh, for yeah. the, par the parade, which is at the same time of year as and part of the Good Neighbor Festival, because it is the parade for the festival, uh, we've got our materials pretty well in hand, although I, I felt like that we could do more on our posters. Um, I think we're done uh, handing out bags. Uh, it's quite costly and it was uh, pretty frenetic. Uh, and we've done it two years in a row. I'd rather see us have a nice group of us march with posters and our banners and another one of these nice uh, LED uh, or EV cars. Uh, and then rather than try to, you know, last two years ago, I, I participated some like many on the committee did at the booth and there were stragglers coming and we had a plethora of, of, of brochures to hand out. I think if we really had a message of things that we wanted to communicate to the public and the right handouts for it, I think it would take some planning for that. I, I think the first year was the parade was Lisa was chair and, and was one of the organizers. A lot of work had to go in and get it ready for that. I think now after last year, we've got the materials for the parade. So other than making some posters, uh, which wouldn't take a whole lot of time if we uh, get the students to help. Um, but I think, the, I think the booth is gonna take some thought if we're gonna do it rather than just take everybody's handouts from uh, we got stuff from Dane County and, you know, every, every environmental organization said, hey, can we leave leave our pamphlets here? So I, I think it's going to take a champion. I quite frankly do not want to be a champion of that, but I would, you know, I would certainly be a part of staffing it. Um, so I'll say that. Well, I think there's more people that see us in the parade than come to the booth. Yeah, and last year we didn't do the booth and I thought that worked fine, actually. <laughs> Kermit, you're nodding. Laura, you're nodding. What yeah, I mean, I, 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 I agree with what uh, Deb was saying, you know, that uh, we just, I don't know, really don't, didn't have a booth and we had, I think, an impact because more people saw us uh, and yeah, uh, it, it's the overhead is significant for the booth and the organizing and, and people are not coming to the good neighbor fest event with that. They're looking for beer and brats. They're not looking for sustainability and flyers. And so, you know, I think part of the challenge with outreach is finding the event that matches the targeted outreach we're envisioning. And uh, I, I think it was worth trying. I'm not sold that it's worth revisiting. Yeah, I agree. Okay, Deb? The other thing is the booth takes hours and hours of time. The parade took, what? an hour and a half, I don't know what it was, hour, hour and a half, something like that. I mean, we're in it, we marched, we were done. But that booth takes, you know, like um, Daphne was there, what, two days, all day, or all she, night and day, another day or something. It, it takes she, a long time to staff that. So that's another consideration. Yeah, because this thing starts Friday evening, afternoon and evening, and it was all day Saturday and Sunday up until five o'clock or so. 
Um, and quite frankly, when I was there, maybe a straggler would come up now and then and was kind of milling around what to take. So I agree with what everybody's saying, Kermit, too, that uh, uh, we should not do the, the, the booth, but focus on getting the good materials for the parade and may, make a good splash for that, and then we're done. It was a lot so, of, you know, it wasn't zero work getting ready for the parade, you know, either. So, right. you know, it was, <clears throat> remember finding the car, you and I met in advance, Dick, you know, to, you know, get that all set up and get, fit the stuff in the car. I mean, it wasn't, it, well, it wasn't overwhelming, but it wasn't zero either. Yeah. Well, we were putting right. bags out and we had to insert a flyer in the bags and uh, yeah. uh, there, there was a whole lot of work, but I feel like we could do the parade without a whole lot of new work. And I would be willing to work on that subgroup. Sounds like we have a champion right there. Is that right? I think he specifically said he wasn't going to be in the champion. I, I said I, I said I would be on the group. And sometimes oh. a, group of, a group of three or four, they don't need a champion. But we just need, we need a, a cohesive body of people who are willing to be. And that means... Christy and all and uh, Kelsey, don't schedule don't schedule ball games away or family visits away or an extra, <laughs> or an extra event. We we need you around, and and, Ker, and Kermit's got to ride his bike, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we need people in the parade to actually walk the route. <laughs> yeah. Okay. What other comments on? you know, uh, priorities or, you know, what, what are we missing? I mean, we listed, so I have, again, I'll, I'll reiterate and please tell me what I missed. So we're going to, no more May, Lisa's going to do, you, are, how do you do this, Lisa, where you draft up something that is, you know, how, how do we get the, this ball if, rolling for the 10 year? If, if Kelly will send me the Word document of last year's resolution, I will update it for this year and find someone else to sign on with me okay okay so i'm hearing lisa one thing, oh, one, go thing, ahead. one thing you i don't see listed here was how do we work with these the slow income housing uh energy efficiency stuff because we have committed in the past and we have the materials of the light bulbs to try to augment what they can do and so as the, the city and kelly's group and staff are promoting all these these energy efficiency things but is our committee committed as a major project to help that facilitate it in, in some way but we have to have a role and the light bulb is one way um, and I feel like that's a pretty major commitment for this year and it, and I don't see it listed here yeah I didn't put everything that we could do or have done or on this list because it I thought I didn't know how it would be structured how we'd go through these um but that's definitely that's definitely going to happen one thing in addition to the light bulb um logistics with that project is also one thing that would be helpful would be to show up at some of these council meetings and just speak in the public comment period the support for this project in general um because I I've I think I've spoken at nearly every um, council meeting, which I should do and I am tasked to do. But I think that um, sometimes if it comes from a, a citizen or a resident, it had maybe holds more weight than me um, talking about it so much. What do you think, Lisa? Add, I totally agree. And I, you know, not to put too fine a point on it, there's an election coming up in April. And I think the more committee members can show up and, uh, you know, not, maybe not all at once, but, you know, keep the drumbeat going that this is an important project and here's why. And we want to see council, everyone on council support it. Um, people are, especially the two mayoral candidates are paying a lot of attention. Um, and I think the more you um, hammer home that message, the more results we'll see. That's a really good point. Okay. Um, I guess we could, add, I mean, since that is seems like a very impactful thing, um, is anyone, do you mind if I just ask, if is anyone interested in doing that and in making a public comment to council? 
Uh, just to clarify, uh, logistics for public council participation. Can you make comments remotely or do you have to be in person? Now you can do it remotely. They set up the technology so you it, can do that. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I, I would can... suggest if you're if you plan to make a public comment, especially about this project, um, it would be great to send it to the finance committee members because we don't have public comments at our meetings. Um, so, and we we always talk about this project first, and then it comes up in council, um, so it gets debated twice. And there's re there's really not much debate. There's really just one council member who is um, not in favor of this project. Um, but yeah, it's any initials. <laughs> I would just ask you to go back and watch the videotape. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, so let me go back and just reiterate here. Um, here's what I'm hearing. Tell me if this sounds right or doesn't. So again, Lisa, starting off again, Lisa's going to handle or start off. Lisa and Kelly, no mo may. Hopefully, do a ten year deal that would be fa fabulous um sustainable purchasing plan that is lisa did an amazing job with the draft um, with the timeline um very skillful um so that is laura myself and uh lisa um then we have lead and that's almost done but there's some you know communications things um then we have the falca tool the fleet dominic is um the champion on that uh and then we, you know, Kelly will need all of our help with the reviewing the sustainable building guidelines. There'll be stakeholder engagement, you know, drafts and our comments, you know, so that seems like a, a significant thing. Um, then we're gonna do the Good Neighbor Parade. It seems like I'm hearing that we are nixing the booth. Is that, do we need to vote on that? Do we, I think that's what I'm hearing. That's most of what anybody, I guess maybe speak now or hold your peace. Is that fair? I'm okay with nixing the booth. Um, I would suggest, and I apologize. I don't think I saw the flyer from last year, but I was gonna remind everyone that in the first year, Maya Lathrop did a very nice, um, we called it the bookmark. Um, and on five, it had five <laughs> things. On one side, it had five things the sustainability committee was gonna be doing. And on the other side, it had five things that all good neighbors, we wanted to see them do. Um, and that's something that could be updated. We've got the template, I think, or she's got the template and could always put a QR code to like the IRA funding website or something. So it's just a, a thought to shortcut the, process of coming up with um, a design for a handout. The handout, that's a good idea. I'm worried about giving a handout without having it in a bag or something, because then we're going to have paper all over the place. Uh, yeah, I agree on the handout. I, um, I mean, the, the little flyer that Maya made was a really nice thing, uh, mm -hmm. and that was in the bag. and. And last year we had bags with a, a sheet we came up with. Um, and this year, I I would be advocating that we don't hand out anything. We just focus on a really good fun event and that we get good participation from the committee. We have lots of people uh, having posters and carrying our banners and um, make ourselves visible that way. Um, Maybe we could also reach out to the other committees and council and invite them to participate because it is sustainable Middleton. It's not the sustainability committee. It's all of us trying to make Middleton more sustainable. Actually, Lisa, I love that idea. And I don't need to be focused in that. You know, I don't even know if I'll be chair by then, but, um, you know, uh, we don't know what's going to happen. But why don't we get the council in there? Because then they can take credit for being green um, and that makes them, I guess, have to stand behind this green stuff a little bit more. I, I think that's a great idea. The more they can feel bought in and get, take the credit for it, great. I can help on the committee. Okay. 
So we have Dick Deb. Um, trying to think. I got the car last year, but we don't want that same car. Why not? That was a cool car. <laughs> <laughs> they have a Tesla, I can tell you that. Yeah, I mean, now I know somebody with a Tesla, but we didn't want that last year because they're so ridiculously expensive. And I don't particularly, well, this is a personal opinion, but I'm not- Well, let's, let's get a self-drive Tesla and just let it run down the road and- Right, the people. <laughs> there's no problems with those. Um, yeah. We're, we're, we're getting anyway. into the weeds for planning the project. That's all for the committee to deal with. Okay, right, right, right. Okay, <clears throat> thank you, Kermit, good point. Okay, okay, so- um. What else do we have? Green team is going to stay. Um, what else do we? What else do we want on this? Sustainable Middleton Award. Don't forget that. That's yes, yes, yes. After and year. we need an update on that, by the way. So let's make sure we get that before we end. But what else do we want on on our on our work plan? I do think well, you'll need to decide about celebration now, because okay. there's a few months to plan it. Really, when you think about monthly meetings yeah well i will say i loved celebration it was a lot of work and it's the kind of event that i think if we continue to do it it will get bigger um i had a lot of people you know i spread the word to my neighbors and like three or four of my neighbors families showed up um and two of them are trying to pursue solar this year um so i think it's the kind of thing that will grow over time. However, I can't be a champion this year. And so recognizing it would have to get started right away. I, I'm content to hold off and maybe try again next year and keep it going after that. I wish we I wish I did have time um, because I do think it's a um, a good event with a lot of potential. And uh, the more we <laughs> I mean we we had a good crowd with very little publicity and another event that Kathy Kuntz um, was sponsoring. So, you know, that was unfortunate, but it's a great location. The splash pads there, parents can bring their kids. Um, but again, I, I can't do it. So I'm content to see it wait until next year. What month was that in? Was that May or was that April? It was July. And see, that's the oh, thing, <laughs> you know, Earth Day, love Earth Day. April is not... <laughs> Not a great day or a great time to be doing anything outdoors in Wisconsin with any kind of certainty. I was sweating it for, is it going to be sunny, you know, in July, but it worked out really well. We had beautiful weather, um, but I was glad when it was over because it was a lot of work. Well, thank you for doing it, yeah. Lisa. Um, okay, salt wise. Oh, oh, go ahead, Carmen. I, I, I was just going to say, given that the opening discussion was emphasizing the importance of triage priority and limiting the number of irons in the fire. Maybe we should stop. <laughs> that, that's you know, where I'm hoping to like, get to. It's perfect. like there, there are lots of more things, but I mean, if we're, I mean, the list that we have, no MOME, sustainable purchasing plan, lead, Falca and the fleet, sustainable building guidelines, Good Neighbor Fest Parade, Sustainable Middleton Award. I think no. that's a, a number of irons that I think we can juggle without getting singed. I totally agree. I'm glad you said it. And I guess I was bringing these up in hopes we could mix them because I think it's just too much. Um, yeah, and and I think we can mix them by default. Okay. They're not I, like on that that I mean, I think that would be my inclination. I mean, other I like people, that. I don't know if we need to make it a formal motion or whether we're just having this informal discussion and can have a popular consensus. Laura? Can, Ke can Kelly read back the list? Oh, sorry, Laura. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to, before we like, I mean, I'm trying to first of all get, are we just, nixing the the events or we haven't like i haven't even discussed what's going on with the energy tracking type of thing um so before we that, vote 
That yeah, one yeah. seems to me, that one seems to me to meet my little graphic, my equation of it's got a champion, it's got like tied to the sustainable city plan and it's got an impact. Yeah. So, and yeah. it's tied to lead. So that's, kind of, and it's actually, right. yeah. So, but, but is it something that the committee needs to do directly or is it something that, you know, Kelly's doing and we're applauding and cheering? I mean, well, actually, I'm trying to work on it. Yeah, you want to? Like, yeah, you want me to just oh, good. Do my little update now, so people know what's going sure. on. Yeah. Okay. So, for those who don't know, um, the Energy Star Portfolio Manager is the EPA's energy tracking tool, and so Middleton is currently tracking its gas and electric using this for all of its buildings and traffic lights. That includes 96 properties, um, but it's tedious to enter this data. So I told Kelly I would try and help her out by entering uh, some of the data, looking at it, seeing if I could find a better way to do it a little bit more uh, efficiently. I know in Fitchburg, she said that they use the Excel file. Long story short, it wasn't quite, the, the tool is actually really pretty cool and not, it's, it's robust. Um, so you, it's very easy to go down in the weeds, but it's it's pretty it's not that hard to understand. Um, but in looking at it, um, I discovered um, some good and bad. The good thing is the tool has evolved. So you can also track various types of wastes and materials used. You can now track your greenhouse gas emissions, um, water, things like that. Um, from our perspective, Part of the reason I hit a bit of a roadblock was I created a new site to work in so that I wouldn't make sure I didn't make any mistakes on what existed, but the tool has been updated. So now the template, there's a 2.0 template. So when I download our data and try and upload it in this other one, it doesn't work because the templates don't match. So then I started looking at our template and I found, um, some potential errors, which made me think I need to go back and like really look at it a little bit more carefully. For example, I was just looking at the airport gate and its energy intensity score was over 9,000 higher than the median. I thought, oh man, that's just an anomaly because it's not really a, a thing, don't worry about it. But then I looked at the irrigation one, air, airport irrigation, and I looked at the um, graph and it had this big spike. And then I looked at the data and the average usage for the irrigation was like, um, what's it like 29, 31, 32 kilowatts, right? And then the big spike had like 230 kilowatts. So it's like, well, that's eight times more than usual. Was that a typo? But the zero is nowhere close to a two, three. So it's like, I kind of feel like I need to go in and look at the data and make sure that it's it's right. So I was at a bit of an impasse. Do I just go back and try and clean up the existing file or do I go to, as I do it, do I just migrate everything over with cut and paste to something new that matches up a little bit better with the MG&E bill? So, um, and we're talking about energy intensive stuff. It seems like, I need to dig through this. It doesn't really look so much like it's a committee thing as it's a person thing where somebody just has to keep going through and the minutia and making sure it's right, mm -hmm. um, which is going to take some time. Um, but it is something that I can do. And like I said, I, I think I found at least a few errors. And the last time we entered data was... Uh, July 2021. So I know how to enter um, data using Excel and you can get like, if, if I can get into the, what I don't know is does the MG&E, if I got into the online account, could I look at just this meter and then enter it, pick a meter and then enter it all at once in my Excel file and upload it. Um, so I guess it's a, a question for Kelly and maybe Kelly and I can chat about this, but this is something that I think is important yep. tied into all those things. I'm willing to do it. 
um, my goal was to do what I could get it done, clean it all up and then hand it off to the intern this summer. It just got a, a little bigger than I thought. Yeah. So that's Laura, I'm going to, I'm going to jump in, in the interest of time, I will support Laura and say it was my oversight actually that yeah. I did not list this earlier because I don't want to see this going away. Oh. I think oh. you're doing a really good job on it. Um, and when I said everything else goes away by default, that was my oversight. Kermit. Yeah. And I was just going to I mean, the Energy Star portfolio data tracking is a line item on the work initiatives. So yeah. And if that's what that refers to, what you're working on, Laura, and you're happy to keep on dribbling that ball down the court, more power to you. I mean, I, I, I yeah, I don't Thank want you, to see Laura. something drop that is being owned. And it does seem like that'd be strategic. What's the old saying? You know, don't expect what you don't inspect. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I mean, I think you're doing really good work. And again, I apologize for my oversight on that. Um, yeah. Okay. So, um, but I, I also, I think we, seems like we have a pretty good plan. That's what I'm feeling. And I don't want to, I hope everyone else is feeling that way. If you're not speak up, but I, I also, we, here's what I'm thinking. We have nine minutes. I think we want a, a quick sustainable Middleton award update. And then we have to do the sustainable, um, or the standing agenda. Lisa. Can, can I quickly yeah. ask Kelly to read the short list of things yeah. then? Yep. I can start, Kelly, if you want me to. Um, well, I had um, the Good Neighbor Festival and No Mo May and Lead Communications, perhaps on the back end, Sustainable Purchasing Plan, the Sustainable Middleton Award, and then helping edit the Sustainable Building Guidelines probably later in the summer. Um, and then, you know, I feel like the thing that Laura is helping me out with is really just like she's a saint and she you're not she's not expected to do this work. This is a true just yes. <laughs> she's helping me on the side so much, but at no time it's not an expect I don't want it to be an expected, you know, um, task for Laura. It's just I ask her to help me wade through it because I think she has an analytical mind that can help figure some of that out and she's been great. But as you see, like you can go way into a rabbit hole with it. And so I don't, mm -hmm. I don't want to put pressure to, you know, to do that and, as a and just, job. Yeah. Just to clarify, when you said Good Neighbor Festival, we're going to narrow parade. the focus into parade. parade. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, I, I think it would be helpful, helpful just to have this all typed up. Yep. Yeah. And so that we could maybe look at it and even vote on it next yeah. next meeting rather than because we've talked so much, we're going to waste more time trying to figure out what it is we would be voting on. And I don't feel yeah. like I want to vote on anything that I can't see. I like that idea. OK, um, so let's maybe um, we'll do that. We'll get that for the next meeting. And I want to give um, you guys time uh, to talk about this amazing sustainable Middleton Award. Okay, being that I couldn't speak last week or last month, <laughs> I'll, I'll start and Dick can fill in anything I've missed. But basically, um, we had we had five um, applications. We met last week to decide uh, the winners. Um, and um, can I say that we chose all? No. Okay. Well, so, well not. Uh, if, I mean, this. this I wasn't will be gonna a... the names. I wasn't going to say okay. the names. I was going to say, this is going to be a public recording, so. Um, okay, so we, we picked winners, and um, uh, the lumber that was at the recycling centers for about eight years drying and et cetera from a storm, uh, we picked up three boards, and um, one of those happened to be black walnut, and the other two were cherry. And so 16 plaques were made out of the cherry and six out of the um, black walnut. Um, so those were produced, routed, et cetera. And then Dick has been working on sealing them so that they're all ready to go. So the next step would be to uh, have the certificates finalized and taken to Alpha Graphics where they're going to attach them with polycarbonate 
and then we'll have our um, actually for for many years we'll have our plaques. So what Dick, what do you want to add to that? It's are now done. My daughter Maya um, was hired by not by the city by by uh, our committee to uh, come up with a really nice uh, well, I think I showed you an earlier template of it last time. We took your comments, we added the mayor's signature. Um, and so we've got a really nice certificate. It turns out that the Black Walnut Board needs a light edge so that the certificate stands out for it. So she made two certificates, one with a light yellow edge and, and then the cherry board is a really light wood. So we've got a, a black edge. So we have two different certificates, all the same style. Uh, other than the and the other than the slate border, they're ready to go. I just and just have to type in the actual uh, names of the recipients and a, a short blurb about what it was that they they did. Uh, but this is all on track. Uh, I've sent the stuff off to Alpha Graphics, and they're going to produce some proofs just to verify that everything looks good. Um, and we'll be having those made up in March. And I think we agreed on the 20th of March uh, for our next sustainability meeting, we will announce who the, the winners are. And then uh, um, there will be a press release at the same time. And then uh, we will be going to the council meeting, what the last one of, of well, before the election in early April and handing out some of the the awards there. And then we're also arranging for the Chamber of Commerce breakfast uh, shortly, a few days or a week or so after to hand out the other plaques. So we're all on track and everything looks good. And we got five, uh, five, five nominations and we felt they all met the criteria. So all five are getting it. Thank you, great summary. And they so did a April, great job. So April 4th. We'll the award council. I'm I, sorry, you'll present at the April 4th council meeting. That's on the. <coughs> that's the on election awards. day. Election yep. day. Yeah. Yes. And then when is the chamber meeting? Two days later. Two days later. Okay. But they will be officially announced because we're going to be able to say in our next committee meeting on March 20th, who the recipients are. Um, so we have selected these five recipients. We will announce them at that point. So they will become public knowledge because they'll be in our minutes and there'll be a press release about that. But then the physical handing out of the awards will handle, will happen in the early April venues, I, mean, I said. Just to clarify one thing um, is, Deb, you said election day is April 4th, which I think I'm recalling as well. So the council won't be meeting then, right? I mean, they're going to bump it we at will. least today. Kelly said we we're, we're meeting. Well, right now the plan is to meet then. It depends on whether um, the church is available for a polling place. Oh, so that's up in the air. Okay, got it. Well, Lori, I asked Lori, the clerk, and she said that the church had confirmed that they would be ready so that she's planning that the council will have their meeting in chambers on April 4th. Okay. Okay, thank you. So we have standing agenda item. Does anyone have any agenda items for uh, the next meeting? Well, any the Middleton, Sustainable Middleton Award. I <laughs> yes. think I think you said you were going to have uh, the street light thing has a as a big uh, agenda item, right? That is true. Yeah. We will have the um, thank you. We will have the um, MGE &E come to that meeting to the next meeting. So um, you know, eager just to get an update and see if we can, as a committee, help to move the LED street lights forward. And then the work plan of yeah. approval. Work work plan yeah. the vote on it, which I like. Yep. Yeah. Good. Okay. Anything else? Oh, just want to stress. Okay. Yep. Okay. Yep. Yep. Exactly. 
Perfect. Um, anything, anything else? And if not, we could have a motion to adjourn. Thank you, everyone. Okay, so moved. Okay, second. Second. All in favor? <laughs> Aye. Aye. Everybody, no nays. <laughs> okay, thank you so much, everyone. I really appreciated the really productive and constructive discussion. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Okay. More later. Okay.